Welcome to the Joy School Podcast. Real talk about what it takes to create your happiest, healthiest, and most dynamic life. And now, here's your host, transformational life coach, happiness strategist, and best-selling author, Christy Ling Spencer. Well, hello, my friends, and welcome to another episode of the show. I'm so grateful and happy that you're here. Thanks for hanging out with me once again. We're going to do a little story time today. It's going to be fun. And this episode is all about creating an abundance mindset and attracting what you want to have in your life. And what really goes along with all of that? And I'm going to share with you a few stories of what's been going on with me recently. And I've been going through a lot of changes in my life this last, probably this last year, and actually quite a few this last few months. Not all of it has been easy. It's been definitely a season of change within myself and within different areas of my life. And sometimes being in those in-between spaces is not the easiest thing in the world. And we have to do a lot of mindset work around it. We have to take extra good care of ourselves during that time and give ourselves extra grace, extra love, extra patience. And also sometimes we have to just learn to just be, to just be in those in-between spaces. And I've had quite a few this past year. But I have to say also on the other side of that, I've had quite a few very big things happen in my life this past year, and they've been pretty great overall. And so, you know, I think it's been a little bit of a roller coaster, sort of being in between changes within myself, changes in who I am as a person and the way I am being in the world, and then big changes in my life. And I've noticed that since I have embraced going through these changes that want to happen in my soul, that I have been attracting things. I mean, just random things, but also big things manifesting like crazy. And I think part of it is just having been willing to sit and be grateful for my life as is and being patient with myself, going through the changes, going through the growth, going through sort of like a metamorphosis, although it really has not been as graceful as that. (laughs) It has been quite bumpy and messy. Uh, And that's okay. You know, life is not always graceful and smooth sailing and peace and harmony. And when we can just hold the space for ourselves to be in those bumps and in the road and in those messy spots, but yet still care for ourselves and give our own selves grace and love and think of ourselves with positive and happy thoughts, right? And think of ourselves in the most positive light. That's when things just settle. And when you can step back and allow the changes that want to happen in your life to happen naturally, and that's not to say don't take action toward things that you want to create. Of course, that is definitely part of it. But there's a certain energy that is created when you can just be peacefully productive and peacefully allowing things to happen in your life. And sometimes just The art of doing nothing and allowing things to just unfold is a beautiful thing. Sometimes doing nothing is just the action you need to take. So I've been doing a mix of all those things this past year and some incredible, amazing things have happened. So first of all, I'm going to start with a smaller of the stories here that is just, it kind of blew my mind a little bit, but it's sort of an example of of what I'm talking about. Like when you think about things, sometimes you just manifest them. But it's a certain energy that is around the train of thinking. It's not thinking about something that you might want or that you want to create from a place of lack or a place of rushing or a place of stress, right? It's a, it's thinking about that thing as if it has already happened or as if you're expecting it to happen, right? There's that energy. And thinking about it in a very light and sort of positive, easygoing manner. I have the, this picture on my wall and it just says, take it easy. And it reminds me of that old Eagles song, but I just love that phrase because sometimes we all just need to be reminded to just take it easy, right? Sometimes when we take it easy, that's the energy that we put out and then things happen easily for us. So I bought a cabin in the mountains. <laughs> <laughs> so that's happened recently. And I'm going to tell you that story after this small story, but I am actually recording this podcast from my new cabin in the mountains. It's 
about two and a half hours outside of Los Angeles in Southern California in the mountain community of Big Bear. There are ski resorts here and beautiful hiking trails. The Pacific Crest Trail goes right by here, a gorgeous lake. And it's just a beautiful community filled with amazing people. And I have been coming here since I was a kid and little girl. And it's always just been a very special soul place for me. And I had a place here a few years ago and ended up selling it and then immediately regretted it. And I have really wanted to get back and have a place here ever since. And it just, the you know, the right timing wasn't happening. And then there was the pandemic and, and I just trusted. I just trusted that the right one would come at the right time. And as much as I wanted it to happen a year or two years or three years ago, as much as I wanted it, I just waited and trusted. So I am here now and the, some of the walls are torn up, the floors torn up, there's paint samples on the walls. It's a mess, but I'm so, so happy and grateful to be here. And I'm going to tell you more about the story of how this happened. But first, I'm going to share with you sort of a small story that plays into this episode. So I have been really working to cultivate an abundance mindset and a gratitude mindset, even more like on a next level this past couple of years, because When I am in that state, and you know, I'm not perfect at it. Nobody is. I mean, there are times when I get frustrated. My husband will hear me dropping F-bombs. Sometimes I get frustrated. It does happen. I'm not perfect. But the more I can live and, and be in that energy of gratitude mindset, recognizing how good my life is and being grateful for all that I have and grateful for the abundance in my life, I find the more comes my way. And it is also just such a peaceful place to be. It really is when you can be secure and grateful and happy with your life the way it is, as is, it's such a peaceful, amazing feeling. So I would say that's probably the first place to start with creating an abundance mindset. Oprah Winfrey, who I just think is amazing and have also uh, followed since I was um, very young and She's just so full of wisdom and and wonderful thoughts. And she said, be thankful for what you have. You'll end up having more. If you concentrate on what you don't have, you will never, ever have enough. And she's so right. And, And so that is really where I'm coming from with this episode, to just really think about your life. And of course, what you want to create and the things you desire, that's perfectly okay. It is perfectly okay, by the way, to be completely grateful and happy with your life as it is, and then still desire new things and have goals, right? But then you're coming from the right place and the right energy. So a little story I was going to share. I am in this house, which is a bit of a wreck, and I'm just so in love with it. And the other day, I was just thinking, you know, there's not much here. There's literally no furniture. There is a mattress on the floor (laughs) where we're sleeping, and it is almost like glamping. And uh, there's no kitchen, all the appliances were taken out and, but we're here doing renovations and I'm working remotely from here. First thing I did was get Wi-Fi set up. And uh, so a couple of days ago, I was just thinking in a very peaceful and sort of like abundant mindset sort of way, like it would be nice to have a little vase here. There is no furniture. There's barely even a couple chairs to sit in and there's no kitchen. There's a mattress on the floor. There's dust everywhere. There's walls torn up. But I thought, wouldn't it be nice to have a little vase just to put some fresh flowers that are cut from the garden because there's a beautiful garden here or, you know, just some greenery, right? To bring a little life into the place as a symbol of what's to come as we bring the life back to this 1970s beautiful cabin. So I'm thinking about, huh, Well, you know, maybe when I'm at the grocery store, I'll see if they have some vases or, you know, if I go to a little vintage shop, maybe I'll just pick one up for a dollar and bring it back and put it on the fireplace mantle just to have a little freshness in the house and bring a little life and maybe like the first little object, right? So didn't really think about it much more, but I was thinking about it a little bit later, just briefly. And there is a vase that I have at my home back in Texas that is my absolute favorite. I've had it for probably 15 years. And it's not a full-size vase. It's a pretty small one. Uh, It's like maybe an extra large bud vase. And it's modern in design. But anyway, I love this vase so much. And I thought, oh, it would be so great if I could find one like that. It would really go well here. So I kind of put it in the back of my mind that when I was out and about town, I was going to look. 
So another day or two goes by and I'm cleaning and I'm cleaning cabinets, which if you've ever cleaned old cabinets that were not yours, it's kind of a gross job. And I'm opening these cabinet doors and I'm scrubbing, scrubbing. I'm pulling out old contact paper that from like 1979, no joke. And it was just so sticky and nasty. So I get to like the last area and I open this one and there inside the cabinet is that vase. My friends, I am not even kidding you. The exact vase that I have at home was inside this cabinet and it just needed a good cleaning, not a chip, nothing. And it was sitting in there and it's the only thing that was left in this entire house by the people who lived here before I bought it (laughs) was that vase. How amazing is that? I literally had to do like a triple take. I picked it up and I thought, wow, if that's not a sign of just trusting the universe and of setting an intention and just putting it out there and putting out the right energy, I don't know what is. Like, and when you can recognize those small signs, and I'm not even kidding you, the exact same base <laughs> still blows my mind. And my life has been that way quite a bit this last couple of years. And it really is just practice. It's just practice. And I put a post up on threads a few days ago that really resonated. And it was about how rushing around all the time is a kind of trauma response. And that used to be me so much. I always rushed around in my life. I always had to get everything done really fast. Now, 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 got to make it happen now. And got to get me this deadline. And most of the deadlines were created in my brain, right? And I was just a person who was high stress. I would rush around a lot. I had some anxiety and I was always rush, rush, rush. And a few years back, I realized, wow, like that is comes from people pleasing, wanting to rush and get everything done including wanting to just please myself so quickly all the time. And then I was letting myself down all the time. So it was this constant cycle. And I posted about this on threads the other day. And this beautiful conversation happened of people being like, wow, like I never thought of it that way, that rushing is bad for your nervous system. And it's a trauma response. And when you really think about it, it repels the kind of energy that we're talking about in this episode, right? And so that's part of it. It goes back to that sign that I have that says, take it easy. It's just about breathing easy and trusting and knowing that everything is working out your way and that the universe has your back and that you're always going to work things out, right? It's this energy of trust in your life combined with the energy of gratitude for what you already have. This is a magical combination that just puts out the most amazing energy people around you will notice. And not only that, you will feel better. Your nervous system will feel better. Your mind will be more clear. Your body will settle and you'll just feel better overall. Another thing I've noticed is when I've really been working to get into this place more often this past couple of years is that I tend to be more mindful about caring for myself. So when I am in that sort of take it easy, abundance, gratitude mindset, in that great energy and sort of trusting myself and trusting the universe that everything is going to unfold just right for me, it's amazing how the choices I make align with that. When I open the refrigerator, the foods I choose love me back, right? And when I wake up in the morning, the first thing I think about is I need to hydrate my body and my cells and my brain and and love them all, right? And they'll love me back. So along with these mindsets that we're talking about in this episode also comes hand in hand with just a natural ease in taking better care of yourself and better self-care habits. So as I mentioned earlier, the Oprah quote, right? Be thankful for what you have and you'll end up having more. And if you concentrate on what you don't have, you will never, never have enough. And that is so true. The more we focus on what we're not making happen right now, the more we focus on what we don't have, the more we focus on lack and scarcity, the more of that we'll get. The more we focus on keeping our eye on the things that we want to have and attract in our life, being grateful and thankful for what we have right now as is. And really reveling in that and allowing yourself to recognize how beautiful and wonderful and amazing your life actually is. Is it perfect? Nobody's life is perfect. My life is definitely not perfect. As I mentioned earlier, I've sort of been on a little bit of a roller coaster this past year or so with change, but I'm trusting it all. And so I really think maybe that's the number one thing. 
you know, in addition to being grateful and getting into the right mindset and taking better care of yourself, it really is about trusting, trusting yourself, trusting your life that everything is going to unfold in just the right way, even when things don't go perfectly. So that brings me to the story of the cabin. So several months ago, and my husband has been in on this with me as well. I mean, the cabins are my passion in life. This is actually my fourth cabin that I'm restoring in my lifetime up in these mountains. And But it's been a few years since I've had one. And when we met a few years ago, I had one up here and he helped me with it. And then we ended up buying another one and then sold both a few years back. And like I said, immediately regretted it. So I really, really was craving to have another place here. And so I started to put the feelers out. Well, several months ago, one popped up that was a fixer. I love restoring them and bringing them back to life. So it, it came up, it was a fixer. It was really tiny. I think it was at like 690 square feet when I first saw it. And we made an offer. I made an offer. And my husband kind of reluctantly was going to go along with me. He's like, it's kind of small. And I'm not sure I want this project right now. But I was like, I've got to do it. Well, it just so happened he had a trip to that area for work. So he took a quick side trip to go look at this cabin because it was sight unseen. I was in Texas and the cabin was in California. Well, long story short, it ended up being 100 square feet smaller than the listing had said, which made it just even way too small. It was like 570, which is fine for like one person, but we want to have family there and things. And I was like, you know, there's several things that just don't don't feel like the right fit. And I think that's a sign. So we ended up not getting that one. And I was a little sad. I was a little heart sick over it because I was like, okay, I just need to take a breath and realize that and trust that the right one is going to come along at the right time. So I started putting the feelers out because this is the thing. When you want to attract something in your life, it's not just about sitting back and thinking about it. You actually have to take action also to make those possibilities abundant, right? So I reached out to some friends of mine up on the mountain, one friend that was in real estate who I had met a while back, and just some other people I knew, wholesalers who do wholesale and real estate, and friends on the mountain just saying, hey, keep your eye out. That this is what I want. Here's my wish list. And I just put it out there, and I set it free. And I thought, the right one will come at the right time. You know, maybe things are overpriced right now, which of course they are across the board. If anybody is struggling with that, my heart goes out to you because it's a little bit crazy in the real estate market right now. But anyway, long story short, the exact right one popped up. I got a message from a friend of mine on the mountain saying, I know of this house, it's going to be coming on the market. It's, it is a complete and total fixer. It's a trust sale. And here's the link. And I was like, oh, wow, this, I think, aside from the fact that it needs a ton, a ton of work, which I'm not afraid of, maybe I should have my own show on HGTV. But I thought this checks all the boxes. And it happened. I put in the offer and it just worked out, got a really nice deal on it. And now I am here. And it really is a little dream come true. And it really took getting in that energy of just not stressing about it, not having that anxiety and that anxiousness and that rushing energy, right? Rush, rush, rush. I wasn't searching Zillow every day. I wasn't searching all the real estate sites every single day looking like, when's it going to come? When's it going to come? I just kind of relaxed and trusted and it did. So it's been a big lesson learned for me and sort of validation in the new energy that I've been trying to get in in my life this past couple of years that when you just relax and take it easy and trust your life, trust yourself and trust the universe, and then get into a place of gratitude and an abundance mindset, recognizing all that you already have in your life and trusting that more of that will come when you just enjoy what you already have. And when you take a breath and slow down and take it easy, right? And so I'm going to continue on that. And this episode is sort of a little bit of a personal one for me, because I'm just sharing a little bit of my journey this past year. But I thought you might be able to relate. And I really wanted to just kind of share that energy. And I wanted to share a little bit of my excitement with you. So if you want to follow the renovations on my cabin, it does have an Instagram, <laughs> which is at Pine View Cabin Big Bear. So if you just go on Instagram, you can follow Pine View Cabin Big Bear, and you will see some beautiful tranquil pictures of our forest behind the cabin and the transformation that's going to be happening. I'm definitely going to be posting some updates there. 
It's going to be beautiful when it's all done, but I think it's going to take about a year to get it to where I want to be. And again, it's about not rushing. Would I love it to be all beautiful and done tomorrow? Of course. But I am enjoying every moment. I'm enjoying it being a wreck right now, to be honest. I really am. I know that these will be great memories and that it'll be great stories someday, right? I might even jump back and re-listen to this episode in the future and just see how far I've come. So again, if you'd like to join that journey, follow me over at, at Pineview Cabin Big Bear, at Pineview Cabin Big Bear on Instagram. And of course, you can follow me as well at Christy Ling Spencer. And I hope you've enjoyed this episode and the little stories I've shared with you. That one about the vase, I'm still just blown away. I intend to very quickly go get some flowers for it just to thank the universe and, you know, and just stay in that great energy. So with that, that brings us to the part of the show where I share a small habit that can have big payoff. And I like to call this part of the show Joy School Habits. And so today's Joy School habit is a fairly simple one. And I believe I've even talked about this a bit on the show, and I know it's in my book, Operation Happiness, but it's super simple. I want you to start drinking about a pint of water each morning, room temperature water, before you have anything else, before your coffee, before your breakfast, before your tea, a pint, a full pint. It sounds like a lot, but it's really not. You I think probably lose that much water while you're sleeping, believe it or not. But there are many, many studies that have been done that show that hydrating first thing in the morning can increase your metabolism by up to 25%. That's amazing. Who doesn't want that? It can get you more energy. It perks up your skin. It perks up your brain, your alertness, and it will improve your day overall. I have spoken to people who have started doing this habit, and some people even drink two pints over like the first hour of the morning and really, really hydrate. And then they'll have their tea or their coffee and their high protein breakfast. That's another great thing to pair with that is they're recommending now to get about 30 grams of protein with your first meal of the day is a great way to kickstart your energy and your metabolism for the day. And and that's what your body needs. But before anything else, The small habit to start creating, if you don't do this already, is to drink a pint of water each morning. Now, I find for me, if I keep it next to the bed and it's ready to go for me when I wake up in the morning, it's so much easier. And that goes for any habit. The more convenient and easy you can make something for any new habit you want to create, the more likely you are to be successful at creating that habit. So remember, when you want to try something new and and give a new habit a try, Set yourself up with like reminders and making it as convenient and easy as possible, right? So tomorrow morning, wake up to at least a pint of water next to you. I actually love to drink out of one of those extra large mason jars. And I find that holds a really nice amount of water. And I'll put like a cap on it or a napkin over it so dust doesn't get in at night. And when I wake up in the morning, it's at perfect room temperature. And now that I've been doing it for so long, I actually crave it. If I don't have the water next to me first thing in the morning, my body is like, where's your water? And it really does make a difference. I think it's even better than coffee, actually, for waking up and becoming alert. I think water is the best brain stimulant, mind stimulant, and energetic stimulant. So that is today's Joy School Habit. It's a super simple one. And... You know, you may not be perfect at it at first, or maybe you already do it most of the time, but you want to just get better. There you have it. All right, my friends, if you enjoyed this episode, please leave a review over on Apple Podcasts or on your favorite podcast platform. They really do help the show and they help others who might enjoy it find it as well. And as always, remember, you have power to create more amazing days and more amazing days add up to a pretty amazing life. Have a beautiful week, my friends. And I will be back with you very soon. Much love.